Discipline is essential when you want to achieve anything. When you are studying, you know you need to be disciplined in order to hit those books, right? Mm -hmm. You need to have discipline when you are mapping out your money promise to yourself, your, your financial goals. So I have a, a picture of a night out there and say you have your, your daily financial goals or your daily budget written out and your friends are like, let's go clubbing. And you think to yourself, okay, it's just one night, I'm gonna do it. Look at that word, discipline. You gotta say no, as hard as it is. There's a, a picture of a holiday there. Your friends are going on holiday, you're going to miss out. Do we know this term, FOMO? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear of missing out, right? I need to go on this holiday, everyone will be there. I feel I'm going to miss out. Look at that word again, it's gonna eat into your monthly budget. Remember, we're making 10 billion shillings, right? Discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline is key in achieving the goals that you set for yourself. So, like I said, it's going to sound really, really repetitive. Because Waitaka said this already. <laughs> and I walked in as he was saying this. The first person you need to pay... Okay, when you go to church, they say, when you get your salary, 10% needs to go into tithing, mm -hmm. right? I say 10% needs to go into paying yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you should not negotiate with. When you pay yourself and you forget about that, that's money that's actually going to work for you in the long term. Don't touch it, don't think about it. So maybe it's not 10%. Maybe your necessities take up a lot more. Maybe it's, and it's going to be 2% or 4%. But once you agree with yourself, and that goes back to discipline and making that money promise to yourself, once you figure that out, that's the money you should be putting away for you. Never negotiate with yourself. So because you guys study money, you know, finances, bad debt versus good debt. We know this, right? We know what good debt is. What's good debt? Good debt? Good debt is anything that works for you. Am I right, Kaifaka? Right, anything that's sort of gonna make you money in the long in the long term. Good debt is even you investing in yourself. Bad debt, then therefore, what do you think that is? Hey, um, guy that I always buy my what's what's it called? The street food? The mayai? Mm -hmm. That one. <laughs> My eye that one. Mm -hmm. I, I can't I can't pay you today but please you know every day every day every day and then it becomes a big debt that's bad debt I've gone to Du Bois somebody I know owns the shop I've taken makeup I'm so excited I'm gonna Instagram it it's doing nothing for you right it's doing nothing for you. That is bad debt. So we have to make a promise to ourselves to get out of debt, bad debt. And um, yeah, if you are in good debt, that's not a bad thing. Make money when you buy. Who understands that concept? Mm -hmm. Make money when you buy. Mm -hmm. You have a strategy, you have money. Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling you, make money when you buy because the norm is make money when you because you count on profit right mine is and he'll tell you mine is make money when you buy in that when you're going out to the market you are a trader look for a product that you know is going to give you that money when you sell it make your money at the time you're buying it if you're going to buy this computer and you know the market value for this computer is 200,000, right? Don't go to the market and buy it for 198 shillings. Go buy it for 170. Make sure you make your money when you're buying it. Because when you come to the market and the market is flooded, what do you do with the computer? You either sell it at cost, so you're losing, right? But remember, the cost is 200,000. 
So if you've made money while you're buying it, you bought it for 170, whether you come back and get it at cost, you made it's a difficult concept, but I hope you understand. So you make money while never make money when you sell. I have learned that over time in the importation business. Clients don't pay. So make your money when you're buying it from the market. That's something I learned. So that if the car is gonna sell here for 2.3 million, make sure you get it for 2 million from abroad. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's something else. Then once you make your money, repetition again, pay yourself. Mm -hmm. I have learned something over time. I hate debts, but I'm deep in debt, <laughs> but I hate debts. Mm -hmm. But I have learned that when you get money, the only thing you do is, hey, I owe this guy 100,000, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pay him. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, after learning, I pay you last. You will make all the noise you want, <laughs> but I'm gonna pay you last. Do you know what? You're not my business interest. I'll pay you last. So whenever you make money, pay yourself first. It sounds repetitive, but it's the only way. Put aside your money, then start paying, and including government, not only, not only people you owe, including government. Pay government last. The norm is, I'll give you an example from where I work. Aga Khan owns the Nation Center, right? Owns Nation Media Group and all, right? Owns PDM. PDM manages Aga Khan's businesses here. But you know what he does? At the end of the month, on the 20th, Nation is paying rent for Nation Center. 10 million shillings. On the 20th. Do you know when we are paid? On the 26th. That's the tragedy. So pay yourself first. Whenever you get money, and then, do not be afraid to borrow if you have a deficit. You know there are people who keep money, who have 10 million, but they are going to borrow 2 million shillings to offset something. You know what? They don't want to associate that risk with them, if, if someone else can pay for that. I'll give you another example of what I do to put money in my pocket. Once I started having money and I want to increase a car in my place. I'll import it myself. A TRJ 150, that's the big product, will cost you anything from 3.6 to 5 million. When you finance it, you finance it, they get a million shillings more, right? So what do I do? Instead of buying it locally, I import it with my money. Once it lands here, I import it with my company name, and then I buy it, buy it from the bank as an individual. You understand that concept? Yeah, I bought it with my money at 3.4. I come here and tell the bank to give me 4 million on my car. So I've made 600,000. Then this car works. Now that's what he was talking about. You have to know what works for you. Because at the end of the day, if you don't figure right, if, if you don't look ahead, you're going to lose. Everyone is in, is in this business for profit. Success for me, bottom line, preparation meeting, opportunity. I was prepared to do the job. I had spent over five years learning how to do it. Mm. I was unhappy where I was. The opportunity came. I grabbed it with both mm. hands and I made it work. Because within no time, that station that was nowhere became a station that now was a force to reckon with. We're killing it on digital. Everyone was talking about our content. People who used to work where I used to work would call me, Hi, is there a job there? Mm. That's when you know you're doing well, eh? When people who are laughing at you for making that decision start calling you, hi, mm. hey, I'll send you my CV, see if there's something. But it wasn't easy, guys. But this is the lesson here. It paid off. Mm -hmm. It paid off because today, again, I'm head of content mm -hmm. at a channel that, again, is the fastest growing channel in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I'm living my dream. I'm hosting a talk show, which is what brought me into this business. Mm -hmm. How many of you guys watch Real Talk with Tamima here? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And the beauty about it, even when I'm handling my show, and like most people you see in front of the camera, I understand the full production cycle. I'm involved in every single detail. I can even tell you how the set was made. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. I'm involved to that level. Yeah. But it took a point where I had to give up to be a presenter to learn the business. Today, thanks to my job, I have very good networks, not just in Kenya, but also internationally. I, I just came from South Africa two weeks ago, networking event, it's called Next TV CEO Africa. And I'll never forget because when I was there, I felt like the smallest person in there. 
everyone around me, you know, MD of this, owner of this. <laughs> And this is the thing, guys were, Guys didn't get it. I was like, I paid for myself to go there. The company didn't pay for me. Mm. I paid for myself to go there because I'm like, if this is the business that I've chosen to meet my money goals in, I need to invest in myself. Mm -hmm. Go network. So if I'm picking up the phone today, there are things I confidently know standing here, only I can do because of the investment I've done in the networks. And whichever industry you're in, you can find parallels between my story and your story. Because initially when I got into this business, I did not know that I want to be the head of content. All I knew is that I have a dream. So for you, wherever you're standing, when we talk, please don't get coward because to you we seem like giants. Start, no matter how small, it could be as simple as I'm selling earrings. What he says, that could morph and morph and become something even bigger. Right now what I'm more focused on is working for myself. Because I spent the last 12 years of my life working for other people. And I feel so well prepared in terms of the experiences that life has given me because when it comes now to money goals, I understand the business of what it is that I 